We're going to fit this nondescript shopping trolley with these individual throttle bodies from a motorbike using the standard ECU wiring sensors the lot. Will it improve the glacial performance? Will these make the lovely brap 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 noise? Will it even work? Will I ever stop asking rhetorical questions and just get on with the video? Yes. Yes, I will. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So, first job on our as yet unnamed project car is to fit these individual throttle bodies. And these are from a Kawasaki ZX6R, and we're going to fit them to our little 125 16 valve engine in a bid to try and give it a bit more character and maybe one or two more horsepower whilst we're at it. So normal business for this type of conversion is to junk the standard ECU, fit a fully mappable standalone unit to tune the engine perfectly for all the extra air we're going to be feeding it. And that can be quite daunting and expensive because you've got to take a lot of the wiring apart, you've got to change a lot of the connections. Potentially, you've got to ruin what you've already got. But is there a way that we can just fit these and fool the ECU and the engine into thinking that it's actually running on fairly standard kit, but it's actually breathing through a set of these and just getting a little bit more air? And will that give us any extra power and any extra performance? Well, we're gonna get stuck in and we're gonna find out. But to start off, we need to take this whole side of the engine to bits and work out how it does what it does. And to do that, we need a montage. Hit the music. So it's been a long time since I've had to work on a standard car and it's depressing how they are not made for maintenance. I mean look at this alternator, I've undone all the bolts and it won't even come out of the engine bay. You've got to remove some random stud that's in there for no apparent reason by putting a Torx bit on the end of it. And it, it's a tiny Torx bit, it needs a quarter inch drive. Who's got a quarter inch drive? Ratchet. Well, tell you what, children and as it turns out my friend and next door neighbour Tom because I gave him for Christmas. So that's the alternator out with a lot of faff. And anyway, we must tidy up the tools, put them back in the proper place because Tom's got OCD and it's nice to return things in the way you got them. So a few more skim knuckles and a bit more clairvoyance to guess the hidden fasteners and oh, cursing the name of the designer who made it this hard in the first place, the inlet manifold is liberated from the engine. And about time too. The original manifold is made out of nylon 6 with glass fibre reinforcement, which is fairly common, but it is very heavy. It's a lot of gravity in it, a lot of material, and it's very stiff. Straight away we can see the injectors are held in the head, which is good, because that means there's one less thing to have to model. However, the crankcase breather is built into the inlet manifold, so that's going to have to be modelled up and printed as a separate item. Once we've stripped it down, we can see there's a few sensors. We've got the idle control valve that we'll have to reuse. We've got a combined intake air temperature sensor and manifold air pressure sensor. And of course, we've got the tiny, cute, my first throttle body. Now that we are not going to use. However, the throttle position sensor that's attached to it, we've got to incorporate into our new design. Now, what I'm not seeing is a mass airflow sensor. And I was very much expecting to see a mass airflow sensor. This car's got one. This car's got one. These cars have got one. In fact, pretty much every OEM spec car has got one. Now, that was going to be a really useful thing for this video, but we may have to find a way around it. This is why. So why was I hoping for a MAF sensor? Well, a MAF sensor, a mass airflow sensor, directly measures the amount of air going into an engine at any given point. And that tells the ECU, along with it doing a bit of maths, exactly how much fuel it needs to inject. Now that's really handy because if you increase the amount of air going into the engine, 
as long as you don't top out the sensor range or the injector flow rates, you'll just inject more fuel. Everyone's happy. Now this engine uses a manifold absolute pressure sensor and intake air temperature sensor to achieve the same goals. But it's not measuring directly the amount of air going in. Instead, it's got a reference table that it looks up against for any engine speed and any air pressure, how much air is going into the engine and therefore how much fuel it needs to inject. And that's called speed density. It's absolutely fine. A lot of aftermarket ECUs use it. The Speedwino uses it. And it's wonderful as long as you don't change anything because that table is written specifically for that type of engine. But junking the entire inlet system and putting individual throttle bodies on it, well, yeah, that might be a bit of a change. So will the existing map need completely changing? Probably. Can I change it? Nope. Are we going to have to do something about it? Maybe. But we've come too far now, boys, so we're going to have to press on and just see what comes of it. I've got a couple of little tricks up my sleeve. So before we go too much longer with this episode, I want to nail down the name. So last time out, I asked you this. So if you guys can come up with a better name for this little project, then please put it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. And you guys did not disappoint. So I'll put a few up on the screen over here, but honorable mentions go to the No Go Kart, Fiesta McFiesta Face, Project Poopy, Ford Fiasco, Ford Kaka, and uh, I particularly like uh, Project Cute Underrated Nice Toy, which is probably a bit long, so it would need to be abbreviated to, ah, uh, yeah, maybe not. So we're going to play it a bit safer with Project Siesta, because at the moment the car is slow enough to put you to sleep. Let's see if we can change that. So first step, let's start designing the inlet manifold to fit these throttle bodies. So in order to get an idea of where we're actually going to put these in relation to the engine, we've put the alternator back on because it's a big hulk and it's right in the way of cylinder one. So if we just offer them up in the general area, there's no chance of getting it, getting the throttle bodies in the middle of all four cylinders. So it's going to have to be off to an edge. And if we angle it up a little bit like that, maybe about 10 degrees up from the, from the mounting face, yeah, and that, that's probably a decent compromise. We've got cylinder four in line. So we've got about a 10 degree up angle and we've got about, about 80 mil. So we'll use that as our first numbers. So we're gonna follow the same process as we did in this video where I modeled the inlet manifold for the mini. But as you can see, Unfortunately, we can't use the scanner to scan the inlet flange because it's just not flat enough. I can't get it onto the printer. So what we've had to do is use a picture alongside lots of measurements because the picture has barrel distortion, so it's not going to be perfect. You can minimize this by taking the picture from far away with the zoom lens, but if you can just measure it off the flange like you can with the bolt holes here, that's your best option. I may well edit this down and put it on the Patreon page for everyone to see. So if you're interested, head over to there. But all the tricks you need are in the video that's already linked in the top corner. So once we're generally happy with the model, we print off just a thin section of the flange and offer it up to the engine. So you can see here, I've tried that and there's a few mods we need to do. There's a little lip on the port there. Oh, yes, mm, that's a problem. So we get a bit busy with the hacksaw do a bit more marking up and a presto. We've got a, an updated design so we can print out a trial half. So we've got the trial printed half in PLA and you can see putting some studs in makes the life a lot easier, but we're gonna to need to put some more studs in here or some longer studs. But if we offer up the inlet manifold, sorry, the ITBs, then we've got just enough clearance to the alternator to be comfortable. We're gonna be nicely inside the, the shut line of the bonnet, I think, especially if we take off the fuel rail, which we will, and we've got enough room to route some air in. I'm happy with that, sorted. 
We're about halfway through, so we can leave it there for this episode. But there's plenty to do next time. We've got to integrate all of the sensors into the manifold and the throttle bodies. We've got to print everything out. We've got to bolt it together, and along with one or two other jobs, before we can even take it out and see if it's going to work, see what the ECU does. So please, guys, put a comment down below. What do you think is going to happen? Is it going to work? Is it going to self-adjust? Or is it going to be a horrible disaster? And I'm going to have to do a whole load more work to get it done. Your guess is as good as mine. Guess we're going to find out together. So if you're still watching now, then please hit the thumbs up. It really does help. And if you like what we're doing on the channel, then please hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss anything next time. And if you'd like to support the channel slightly more, then head over to the Patreon page and consider joining these fine people down here for all the normal perks and giving the channel that little bit more support to help me probably have to replace the whole fuel system on this car to get it to work. Right, plenty more to do, so I'm going to crack on. Catch you later. Ooh.